Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, today's my birthday. Holy cow, <laughs> how time flies. Well, uh, to celebrate my birthday, I have another project on my workbench behind me. And um, I've actually worked on uh, this, uh, this same model of amp uh, before. So uh, I'm just going to take you over there and uh, show you what we got going on. So just uh, stand by and I'll be right back. Yes, folks, it's another Fender amp in here. It seems like Fender is the choice of amps up here in northern Canada. And here we go. We've got the uh, another Reverb uh, Deluxe uh, Fender. Uh, uh, I think it's a 22-watt uh, Silver Face uh, amp here. And uh, this is uh, hopefully not going to be uh, too long a video or uh, too much of a too much of a problem. I, I, I don't think there's maybe a lot wrong with this. Uh, um, basically, uh, it, it, I think the tubes are getting weak. Uh, the guy's complaining a little bit about, oh, the reverb kind of is not quite right and the volume's not quite right and whatnot. So anyways, uh, what we ended up doing, uh, uh, he said to me, you know what? He said, order me a good set of brand new tubes for this bloody thing. So what I ended up doing is down here, what have I got here? Let's go down and take a look. So, uh, anyways, we got a whole new set of tubes for this uh, this uh, thing. And I ended up, uh, kind of looked around and seen what was kind of hot and what's not. And uh, it looks like these, uh, you know, from what I can read, the uh, everybody seems to be happy with these Ruby JJ tube replacement. So, uh, we've got the whole thing here. We've got a rectifier tube here. We've got two matched power tubes uh, right here. And then, of course, over here we've got uh, the six, uh, the six preamp uh, uh, set of tubes that are going to go in. And uh, I'm going to take the back plate off. I just started. You can see I took a couple screws out already, and uh, going to be taking another one. Now, one thing I mentioned before on these uh, with a previous video, you got to watch these little uh, these little chrome. Uh, uh, there's a little grommet that that sits in there uh, underneath the uh, the uh, the Phillips screw. And it's really small, and you know what? Uh, if you're not careful, the darn thing's falling out. And you look all over the floor for it. So just a little caution when you take that back panel off. Be aware of those little grommets that'll fall out on you. So what we're going to do? We'll set up the webcam uh, kind of in behind here, and I think uh, we're just going to go for a, just a straight tube replacement to start off with. And uh, we're all going to have to bias it as well with a new set of tubes. So we'll see that process, which is not a big deal either. So anyways, if you're interested in seeing a tube replacement and I, and I set the bias on the power tubes, well, stay tuned. You're going to find out how to do it right here. Now I'm going to take you in for just a little close-up look at that uh, that i got going on here. You see the screwdriver <laughs> that I've got taped here. I always, uh, with these amps, uh, because of the BIOS, a little of uh, the pot, if I can get down here, I don't know if I can see it, it's way, you see that up in there? See where that screwdriver goes? Way back up and behind. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it's way back, and there's no way, playing with stuff in the front, that you can ever get that screwdriver in that, that little pot at the back uh, after you've got cables or stuff in front. So I just stick that up there and uh, get it seated and put a little tape on the screwdriver so it's all ready to go and that's how well that's where we that's the pot that sets the bias for the pyre the the power tubes so uh you know that's kind of kind of what's going on so you can see here um you know here we've got the rectifier tube here we've got uh, two power tubes and then we've got the preamps all over there they've got these little cans on and we'll take off see that in the video coming up next and uh basically that's what we're going to do we're going to be replacing uh all these tubes um as far as the biased uh, bias thing, the tubes are concerned, uh, I have a, a, a unit here that I've uh, got from Stumac, and it goes and it allows me to, uh, to uh, put the uh, power tubes uh, in series, um, you know, uh, on the connectors here. And then I can check each power tube on the meter here one at a time and uh, set the milliamp uh, current flow uh, to the recommended specs that Fender have um, for this particular uh, amp. And uh, basically, the specs on this amp um, goes anywhere from uh, uh, 22 uh, millivolts up to around 28 millivolts in, in that range. So this is what we're going to be setting these power tubes at uh, uh, when we put the new ones in as far as the, uh, the current flow into them. 
and see what happens. But I just, just wanted to show you that kind of that little pod there so you know what's going on with this whole thing. Or you're going to say, what the heck is that screwdriver doing there with that green tape on it? Anyway, now you know, uh, now you have the answer to that, uh, that question. So I'll put the webcam back up on the side here so you can see this tube replacement in process and also the biasing the tubes. So stand by. Well, just for fun, I've got the rectifier tube taken out and the two power tubes. And now I'm going to start taking these preamp tubes out of here. So uh, we're just going to, these little canisters, they just, ah, I get push them in and they just go up a little bit and they just twist off. Supposedly, that one doesn't want to come off. Let me get this thing out of the way. Get that off of there first. There we go. That one comes off good. What the heck? There it comes. A little, a little hard to get that one off. Whoa. A little sticky. Should just push off and turn up like this, just like that. The one on this one was a little hard to get out for some reason, so that's okay. They're all out. So we got all those out. Okay, so now let's see what we got. There's our rectifier tube right there. So let's get it out of the out of the case here. Yeah, look at that. Rectifier tube. Yeah. Magic parts, eh? Ruby tube. So, see if we can get this to go up into there. Can only go in one way because you see how there's a. Hopefully, it only goes in one way. <laughs> We're gonna find out in a minute. There's a, there's a little key, uh, marking on here, on that little center stem. So it's, it's pretty hard to get these things in the wrong way. They only go in one way, just like, like that. Hard to get in. Well, this is a good thing. Maybe. She wants to go in there. No, I didn't want to go. It's a toughie. That's a toughie, that one. Let's just put her back a little bit and see if we can make sure. See if we can get this thing to go in. It should just go right in, but let's try that again. Should just. It's a tight fit, eh? There, there it goes. Oh, wow, that's a tight one. See the little clips here too, the little holder clips that hold it on. So anyway, there's the rectifier tube in. Uh, then we got a set of matching power tubes here that we got. Yes, power tubes they are. And we're going to slide them in next. Yep. Says a matching set, taped together. So, matched pair, it says. So, let's see if we can make sure we get this the right way. Oh, you know what we're going to do here? This is where I can put this thing in series because what I'm going to do, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to set the bias on this thing. So, again, this only goes in one way. So what you do, that's the one on the right. Get the one on the other side here. And again, you can see the key slot there. So there's no way to put this in wrong. But that's a tight one, eh? Holy moly. She's a tight fit. Didn't want to go. I don't know why. There it goes. Finally went on. And what you do, and now keep in mind, make sure that you haven't plugged this stupid thing in, eh? <laughs> like, whatever you do, I should have mentioned that. You make sure this thing has been shut off, the no power's on it. You make sure this has been shut off for a while. 
Uh, you know, and now this is sat all night. You don't have to leave it set that, sit that long, but you sure don't want to be fiddle-diddling in this amplifier if this thing was just recently unplugged because the capacitors inside this, uh, this, uh, this amplifier will hold the voltage for a while. And all of a sudden, you know, I think you know, you're looking at 250 volts, 190 to 250 volts across in here. And uh, you don't want to be playing in that. So uh, anyways, it's been unplugged uh, all, all night, so I know I'm not worried about anything there. But we're going to see if we can get these to go in. Go in. That went in. Now we're going to get this guy to go in. So you can start to see what this is all about now. You can see what I'm doing is these leads uh, for each power tube, uh, the little connector goes in series here so that the tube is, is, is powered through this connector, coupler if you will, and now I can actually read the voltage on these two tubes from these, uh, this, this, these meters here. So that's what that's all about, if you wonder what I'm doing. So now, let's just put these little canisters aside so they don't get lost. Don't want to lose them. And uh, you notice too, I've got, uh, I don't know, I always put uh, uh, these, uh, these, these surgical gloves on uh, when I'm working on this stuff. I, I don't know. Um, for me, I, I don't like to get fingerprints on brand new tubes. Uh, I don't think it really does any damage to it because you wipe them off. But I usually, I usually, uh, I usually put this, uh, put the uh, these on when I'm playing here. And you know what? I, the other thing I find is I get a better hold of the tube uh, with these on. So let's see if we can get these tubes out. Now these are the ones you got to be very careful when you put them back in because it's very easy to bend these pins when these go back in. And again, you can see there's one pin missing there. So it only goes in one way, but you know, somebody get it off a little bit and start moving it back and forth, the next thing they bend a pin over and they ruin the tube. So that's one of the things you have to be careful of, eh? When you're, especially with these bigger ones, not too big a deal, but these little guys, that's not a very big pin on there. So just so you know. So what is this? 12AT7, eh? 12AT7. Let's see what we got here. Let me see if I can open this up and see what we, we got for our, our preamp selection of the day is what we're looking at here. Preamp selection of the day. So they got these all taped together. <laughs> Pretty good. They're not going to come apart by themselves, that's for sure. Okay. Let's try to get this tape all off. Holy cow. Lots of tape. Okay. We're getting there. Boy, that's good sticky tape those guys use at uh, Stumac. Let me tell you, that's sticky as heck, that tape. Wow. Uh, this, these tubes came from Stumac, by the way, just so you know. It's where most of my stuff, parts, and, uh, and tools come from, is, is from Stumac. Like I said, i never, never been disappointed with uh, the equipment uh, parts that I get from that place. And uh, I'm up in Canada, but I order pretty well everything from Stumac. So let's see what we got here. Ruby tube, 12AX7 AC high grade. AC high grade. So that's, those are both, the, those are the same tubes. 12AX7 AC5s. These should hopefully be the same. 12 AC, uh, no, 12 AX7, I should say. AC5s. This one is the same. No, this one is a different tube type. This one is a 12 AT7CZ tube. So that's different. 12A, this is the same tube here. Yeah, 12AX7 AC5. What is this type here? The, uh, the little sticker went right over top of the, right over top of, the, there it is right there. It's a 12AC, 
twelve ATCs uh, CZ. So there's the two there. These are two. These four are the same. And these two are the same. Okie dokie. Let's pull these tubes out. One thing I mentioned too, as I take these tubes out of here, you're going to notice that I'm going to stack these tubes and I'm going to put them in order. Okay? So you, this is kind of out of the way where you can't see this. But these are going to be put out in, in the same order I take them out. So I don't have to worry. I have to put the tubes back in wondering which ones go where. So just a little thing that I always do. Start over here with that one. I put it out of the way. Pull that one out. It's next. Take the next one out. It's next. Take the next one out. Oh, what kind of tube is this anyways? 12 ATC, okay, it's same, same type. Okay, take the next. Now these two, I think, are the two different ones. Yeah, these are CC83s, ECC83s. So that's going to be replaced with these guys over here. So let's take a look. Let's make sure this one's the same kind. Should be. Yeah, A3s, A3s. So the two that come out on the far right here, they're the same type, and uh, these four here are the same type, okay? So now that we know that, and it's always the same. So all these tubes here are going to go right in. Ruby, yep, right in there. So now you see what I'm talking about here. You got to be careful when you put these tubes in because you feel it. It goes right in, eh? if you get it exactly in the right spot. You go to push that in and wiggle a little bit and it feels like it's not going in. Pretty good chance, pretty good chance that you don't have the pins lined up correctly, okay? So you see, I'm just gonna go there. See if I can find it here quickly, there, no? Sometimes it's a good idea to tilt this back a little bit. And just see where that is, okay. That should just slide in there. and doesn't want to go in, eh? Huh. There it goes. There, you see, there it goes. I think. Yeah. Make sure you get them seated in all the way. Take the next one out. That one in right away. And we got one more left to go here. Get this open up. That's those four done. And we got, these are the matching ones on the right hand side. These are the 12AT7CZ. ECC81s it says on here. Which is I think, let's take a look at this, the one that comes out. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're going from a, an 83 to an 81 on this side here. So let's just pop these guys in. 
See if we can get these to go in now without any hassle. So far, I don't want to grab here. Let's see if I can. There it is. That goes in. One left to go. I'm just checking to make sure all those tubes are properly seated, and they are. So what's next on the agenda? Next on the agenda is to put the internal speaker back online. That's next. And I guess the next effort is to plug this guy in. I'm going to make sure the power is off. I'm going to make sure it's on standby. So I take my power car cord. I have a power bar out the back here that you can't see. But excuse me as I reach across. Plug in the power on this guy like that. Let's check the fuse on this, by the way. Two amp. Two amp fuse, looks good. There we go, back in. So, let us see what we shall see when we power this guy on. On goes the power. You notice I still have it on uh, standby mode, eh guys? Just put it on like that, everything. Let's put... Uh, Power it up. Okay. hear the reverb tank there one thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check these tubes um, just take a little little guy like this a little stylist and I'm just gonna tap each tube sound coming through on that. Let's see what our bias is set at. One thing about the bias is you want to make sure you let this thing warm up for a while because when it first powers up it, 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 you're not going to get a true reading. So you want to make sure you power it up, take it off of standby, let it sit in its normal powered state just like this. And uh, I'm looking at my settings here, and they're, uh, right now we're looking at, well, let's see. We are looking at, as far as milliamps on both of these power tubes, we are looking at, there's 30. We're looking at about 25 right now on these, on these guys. Test, test. Yeah, so we're going to let this thing let this thing uh, warm up here, make sure it's on for a while. We're getting a pretty steady reading. You can see. 
I'm just going to touch this up ever so slightly. So I'm setting it up around 26 right now on this guy. And it's balanced. So I got 20, uh, 20, uh, 26 milliamps of current flow uh, going into these tubes. And uh, like I said, uh, you're looking at somewhere between, uh, you know, 22 to 28 in that range. Um, the lower the setting, uh, the less, uh, I guess, how would I explain this? Uh, if you get a lower setting on this amp, you'd be into more uh, uh, easy, whoop, fall over, easy going, uh, you know, jazz type of playing music, um, that kind of thing. And as you go up, you know, get around 24, uh, 25, uh, you know, you're into, you know, easy rock country kind, and then you put it up, pump it up a little higher, you're into a little more like rock kind of music. So uh, it's, it's kind of an individual setting for everybody. But I set this right now at 26. And it's sitting there solid at 26. So I'm happy with, I'm happy with that. And we're just going to let this thing sit here for a while. Because I want to make sure... That I don't uh, run into no uh, none of these tubes are glowing hot red, with a, with a plate problem. So uh, we're just going to let them sit, and I'm going to turn off my light here for a minute, uh, so I can see just a little glow on the rectifier tube, a little glow on both power tubes. Nothing out of the ordinary happening here. So this is good. So I'm going to stop the video now for a while, guys. Uh, this is going to sit here. I'm going to leave the meter on. I'm going to let this thing sit for about a half an hour, just like this, uh, with the new tubes in place, and leave my, uh, my biased uh, meter sitting uh, in line here as well so that I, uh, I can come back and check in a half an hour and make sure everything is uh, as it should be. So uh, uh, we'll say goodbye for now, but stay tuned and uh, we'll see the next video coming in and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, putting a guitar on this thing and uh, seeing what happens. Over and out, have a good one. Well, we got this, uh, this amp back together. I just got the back plate to put on it. I still haven't put the little canisters on yet because uh, we're going to check this out and see what it sounds like. Like I say, we got a new set of Ruby tubes in here. Uh, the bias was set uh, probably a little on the high side, uh, you know, 26, I think I got it set at, and we're going to see what this thing sounds like. I got heavy reverb on it now because this is the problem he was talking about, no reverb. Well, I don't know. So I got it plugged in and I got the, re the re uh, reverb set on. So uh, I'm on the custom uh, one plug on this guy. Just turn that reverb down a little bit. Woo. There's the intensity way high on it.
Sounds pretty good. Uh, I'm going to check all the plugs, I guess. I'll uh, just put it on standby here for a moment. And uh, flip it off. I'll try this. Uh, try every plug here. Let's go to custom two here. Let's see what happens here. Put that back on. <laughs> that set at. Got the volume right down on it right now. Oh, nice. Got the reverb set at five on this. Intensity's at four. this custom one man I like the sound on this guy Still got the bias in the back of it, and uh, wrap it up. Right, so the, the new tube job uh, really sounds great on this guy. I'm pretty happy. I, boy, I wouldn't mind this myself, this little amp, let me tell you. One of the best amps going is that uh, Fender Deluxe uh, reissue. Uh, 22 watts of power on a tube amp. That's a lot of power on a tube amp, eh? Anyway, over and out. You all have a great weekend and a great week, and whatever else comes your way, God bless. Bye-bye.